Hello again, Anna Reynolds, friends and families. I'm back for another edition of Books and Cooks. Today, I'd like to share a story with you that's actually a folk tale. I think it's an old German folk tale, this particular one. And a folk tale is a type of story that typically has three things. One being it's a story that's passed down orally, like by word of mouth. It's told from generation to generation. And typically every time the story is told, it changes slightly. Either the character could be a little different or a few things happening in the story could be a little different. It has the same theme, but there are different um, things that happen in the story. And the third thing that a folk tale has is usually a moral or a lesson, something to be learned, a life lesson. So those are the three things you would look for in a folk tale. It's called a folk tale because folk just kind of means common person, just your average Joe. And they're typically about an average or a common person. In this story called Stone Soup, we're going to learn a moral or a lesson, which is actually very appropriate for what is happening in the world right now. We can talk about that a little bit later at the end. For now, sit back and enjoy the story of Stone Soup. And then of course, I've got the cooking activity that can go along with it. Stone Soup. This is just one version. This is retold by Annette Smith. Okay, let me see if you, we can see this. Uh, I have a little shine in my kitchen with the lights. Let's try. Once upon a time, there was a young man who was very poor. He had no money to buy food and he was very hungry. He had been walking all day when at last he came to a small cottage. He knocked on the door and an old woman opened it. Let's see if I can do this. Does this help a little? You might want to go online and look for this story and you could see it better. I am very hungry, said the young man. Can you give me some food? I have nothing here for you to eat, said the old woman. The young man took a stone from his pocket. Oh wait, I think I have one. There it is. This is a soup stone, he said. Please let me come in and I will show you how to make stone Soup. Hmm. Oh, I have never heard of that before, said the old woman. But come on in, I'll get a pot. Just fill the pot with water, said the young man. And then just go put it on the fire. Water? and a stone? Hmm, that doesn't sound too delicious. Soon, the water was bubbling and the young man put the soup stone into the pot. He stirred the soup around and around and as he stirred, he hummed a little tune. Is the soup ready yet? asked the old woman. Oh no, not yet, said the young man as he tasted the soup. The soup is delicious, but if I had an onion or two, oh, it would taste even better. Oh, oh, okay, Um, I think I have an onion. Let me go and get one from my cupboard which means cabinet or pantry, said the old woman. 
the old woman put the onions into the pot with the stoop stone. So now it's water, a stone, and some onions. And the young man stirred the pot around and around. And as he stirred, he hummed a little tune. Is the soup ready yet? Asked the old woman. Oh, no, 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 not yet, said the young man as he tasted the soup. This soup is delicious. But if I had like a carrot or two, it would certainly taste even better. Now remember, she said she had no food, but I think she's starting to get curious. Oh, let me go check my cupboard. Oh no, let me go check my garden. I think I might have some carrots in my garden, said the old woman. Okay. She went to her garden and she got some carrots and she put the carrots into the pot with the onion, the stone, and the water. The young man stirred the soup around and around. And as he stirred, he hummed a little tune. Is the soup ready yet? Asked the old woman. I'm afraid not yet, said the young man. This soup is delicious, but you know what? Would make it taste even better? If I had like a little chicken or something. Oh, a chicken? Oh, I've got a chicken. Let me go and get it, said the old woman. So the old woman went and got a chicken. She must have had that in her backyard. And she put the chicken into the pot with the carrots, the onions, the soup stone, and the water. And the young man stirred that soup around and around, and as he stirred, he hummed a little tune. Is this soup finally ready? Is it ready yet? Asked the old woman. Oh, it smells so good. And it tastes so good, said the young man, licking his lips. But I think we should add some spices, like salt or pepper, or anything you have to make it taste better. So the woman ran to her cupboard and got some spices. And we added it into the soup. And the man stirred the pot. And as he stirred, he hummed his tune. And now, the old woman asked again, is the soup finally ready? And the young man said, yup, now the soup is ready. So the old woman hurried away and she got two bowls. The young man lifted the stone out of the pot. Oh, they're not eating the stone. Hmm, I was kind of wondering about that, weren't you? I know crocodiles eat stones to digest their food, but people shouldn't. Then the man put the soup into the bowls on the table. The soup that had the water and the onions and the carrots and the chicken and the spices but no more stone. Here's the picture. Oh my goodness, this soup is so delicious, said the old woman. I wish I had a stone that could make soup. Do you think the stone was really what made the soup? Do you think this was a magic stone? Hmm. Think about that. Talk about that with your family. 
Well, said the young man, as you have been so kind to me, and I'm not hungry anymore, I'm going to give you this soup stone. And then the young man went on his way, humming a little tune. He smiled to himself as he picked up another stone and put it in his pocket. Why do you think he did that? If I were to think why, why would he pick up another stone and put it in his pocket? Well, he's gonna be walking again for a long, long time. He probably doesn't have a home. He probably just sleeps outside. He's going to get hungry again, right? Do you think he's going to knock on somebody else's door and try the same thing? You think asking them maybe if they have any food? And if they say they don't, he might say, that's okay. All I need is some water and we can have stone soup. Interesting. This particular version of stone soup then comes with a little play where you could have a narrator and a young man and an old woman and people could act out different parts. And this is fantastic to put on a play for one another um, and for practicing fluency, for practicing talking like the characters and using good expression. There's so many versions. If you just go on um, different websites and just Google stone soup, you will be given many, many versions, different characters, um, different ingredients even put into the soup. But the one thing that does remain the same is the stone. And I want you to think about the moral of the story. Think about what is the author trying to teach us by writing a story like this? We'll talk about it after I share my recipe with you, okay? So I know how to make stone soup. I have made it many, many, many ways because again, there are many versions. Some people put chicken in their stone soup. Some people put different vegetables in their stone soup. Um, I'm gonna show you one version or one way, but you can experiment in your own kitchens, right? Don't be afraid to try doing it the way I do it first maybe, or being a little bit creative and adding a little bit of your own. The one thing I'd like you to start with though to make it real stone soup is to go out and get yourself a good stone. A lot of the stories call for a round gray stone. Other stories just call for any old stone, okay? After you get your stone from outside, please wash it with soap and water and get it really clean before you add it into your pot. All right, I already did that. So this is the stone we are gonna use today for stone soup. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do I'm gonna walk over to my stove, is I've already put some water in my pot, okay? I've got some water in there, and I'm going to add a stone. Again, I'm not giving you measurements per se, because you can make as much or as little as you want. So, you know, put, you know, about that much water in the pot, okay? Then we're gonna add some other things but I'm also going to add some chicken broth because I found out that with stone soup, if you add a little more flavoring, it's even that much better. All right, so I'm gonna go, so I've got my stone in there. It's gonna be hard to see, you can hear it though. It's in there with the water, okay? And now I'm going to put in some chicken stock or chicken broth, okay? I go to my grocery store and I buy any kind I want and I'm gonna shake it up a little. You don't really have to because you're gonna stir the soup. I also like to add the chicken broth. So it's usually like one box of chicken broth and then I fill the chicken broth box with water and I put some water in as well. Or you can add two boxes of chicken broth and a little less water, whatever you want, okay? And that really is only going to make it 
have just a tiny bit more flavor, all right? So now it just looks like this, okay? It's like a little bit yellowish. It still looks very watery because chicken broth is just broth, okay? It's still watery. Smells a little bit better than just water, though, in the stone. All right. The ingredients that I always use are carrots. And I like to buy just these baby carrots that are um, in a bag, washed already. And I usually do add the whole bag because I like how the carrots make the soup kind of an orangey yellow color in a way. And it gives it a lot of flavor. Now I know I've got some kids out there going, oh, but I don't like carrots. Just wait till I get to the end because there's a, re there's a trick to getting you kids to eat your vegetables without actually having to crunch on them, okay? All right, the next thing I always add is a really big onion, all right? You gotta peel off the onion skin first and then I usually chop it into four pieces or quarters because carrots and onion and celery are the three things I usually put in the soup. But guess what? I don't have any celery today and I have not been going to the grocery store. So I am making this with what I have in my house today, all right? But you could also put in one stalk of celery if you want, but it doesn't really matter if you do or don't, but definitely carrots and onions, and my house always has carrots and onions, so I'm never, ever out. So what I did is I already peeled one, okay? So I'm gonna put four quart, four pieces. I'm gonna put one large onion, and I always do a good size onion, okay? In goes the onion. Now, carrots, onion, celery, water, chicken broth, and then spices, you could do it that way. That If that's all you have, make it that way, okay? Boil it on the stove, lightly, lightly rolling. A rolling boil means keeping it on low and it'll just kind of simmer for like 30 minutes until, again, the vegetables are soft. Your fork will go right through them or they're actually almost even falling apart in the pan. You want it that way, okay? But today, I actually went into my refrigerator and I just found a few leftover things because I had made some vegetable pizza the other day and I had some leftover zucchini, so I'm gonna throw that in. I had some leftover green squash, so I'm gonna throw that in. I actually had a couple of leftover mushrooms that I had, I'm gonna throw those in. I had, oh, I even had a couple leftover tomatoes that I had used for my pizza, I'm throwing those in. I had some broccoli, I'm throwing that in. And remember when I made those sweet potato ice cream cones? I had some leftover sweet potatoes and some leftover white potato that I had never even used. Saved it in my refrigerator. Guess what? That's going in the pot too. Why not? All right? So now in my pot, I've got a bunch of vegetables. But the most important vegetables were the carrots and the onions, okay? The rest is what you want to put in. Not too, too many of the other vegetables though, because I want the carrots and the onions to be the base of our soup, in the stone, of course. All right, so now I'm gonna add in some, some or spices as I call it. For me, it's definitely salt and pepper, maybe even garlic salt and celery salt. Now, I also have a chicken, a rotisserie chicken that I bought at the store and I usually keep these in my freezer because this is sometimes what I use to make soup. Other times I'll warm them up and we'll eat the chicken off of it as one meal. And then we actually take the chicken carcass or the bones and we put it in the soup just for flavor. And then before we eat the soup, we take all the bones out. But the bones are actually, or carcass as it's called, actually add flavor to soup, okay? So I could put this whole chicken in here and simmer the vegetables and everything with the chicken and then I could peel off some of the chicken meat and break it into pieces and I could add that into my bowl when it's time to eat the soup, okay? I could. Um, today I'm gonna actually just leave this separate because I think we're gonna eat this maybe for lunch tomorrow and then I'll freeze the leftover bones or carcass back in my freezer 
so the next time I make chicken soup or stone soup, I may use it for flavor. Today, I'm actually going to leave it out for now. All right, so let me put in salt. Now, here's the part I have to tell you. You have to use a lot of salt and pepper or spices when you make soup. If you don't, it's going to taste bland, which means no flavor and watery, all right? I will start with a good heaping tablespoon of salt, like a good one, all right? That's going in. So if you have high blood pressure, you're not to have a lot of salt, you're gonna have to try a variety of other spices to give it flavor. Soup always needs salt, okay? I'm gonna use a little bit of garlic salt even, maybe just a teaspoon, just a, just a little amount, okay? I also like celery salt, because if I'm gonna put celery in, why not put in celery salt, okay? Another little bit of that. My pepper grinder, I'll just grind in some pepper, all right? The next thing you do is, you will now put it on the stove, okay? It's got all that stuff in it. Let me see if I could show it to you even at all. Whoops, there it goes on my floor. Well, maybe if I step back a little, okay? It's all in there. It's hard to be the camera person and the cook at the same time, all right? And I would turn on my stove, I would get it boiling, I would put a lid on it, and I would actually just put the lid kind of like half on, half off, almost like that, and I like it to just simmer, all right? And I'm gonna let it just boil away, simmering low, all right? And I will let that cook I don't know, 30 minutes or so. Maybe even shut it off and just leave it on the stove for a couple hours and let the vegetables get super duper duper soft. Okay, once the vegetables are soft, I sometimes do taste the broth, okay? If it's not enough flavor for me or if it's not salty enough, I will add a little more salt. So as a cook, you do have to taste all the way along. All right, for now, I'm gonna leave it. All right, so let's pretend it's been cooking for at least 30 minutes and I get my fork and I'm piercing all the vegetables and everybody's nice and soft, like super soft, okay? Almost falling apart. Now what I need to do is I don't wanna eat it like this. I don't like chunks of vegetables to munch on in my soup. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna blend it. So you do need a blender. It can be any blender. It doesn't have to be a Vitamix like I have, which is a super blender, but any blender, okay? So what you're going to do now is get the stone out. That's the first thing. So I'm going to uh, get my ladle, okay? And I'm gonna fish to the bottom of it. I'm like, where is my stone? Oh, I see it and I feel it. And there it is, okay? Here it is. The stone is out. I will save that for another day, all right? There's no stone in there now. But because it was in there, we're calling it stone soup. Then you're going to take your blender, and a little at a time, because the this is, and I sometimes want this to cool before I do it. Don't do it when the soup is hot. So let it really cool off, because when you blend hot liquids, they tend to expand and they can come out the top of the blender, okay? So what I do is I take some of the vegetables and I take some of the broth, and this takes a little bit of time and it does get a little bit messy sometimes. And I usually go about halfway up the blender and I put in my carrots and my onions and my whatever, it doesn't matter. And you are going to take this and you are going to blend it till it's smooth. This becomes a liquid, and it almost turns like a golden, orangey, yellow color. If you put too many green vegetables in, it ends up looking green, and then it doesn't look or taste good. So keep the green vegetables to a minimum. I only put like one piece of broccoli in there. I really kept it mostly of the carrots, the onions, the white potato, the sweet potato, just the things that are gonna keep that orangey, yellow color. Remember the rainbow cake? when colors mix what happens, okay? So then you're going to put it on your blender. You would take your top, make sure it's on, and remember, don't do this when the liquid is hot. Let the liquid cool. Let your soup cool off completely. 
And the reason you will turn this on and it will end up blending it all together. Now I didn't wait 30 minutes and this is not um, soft enough yet. So if I were to start blending it, it's not gonna probably work right now. You know, I could turn it on, but with my Vitamix, I mean, I could still make it, but look what's happening. It's not, it's not cooked yet, so I still got these pieces. Now, if you're someone who likes pieces in your soup, go ahead and eat it that way, but most kids don't. So let me show you what I did. I already did a pot before you came into my kitchen where I had taken a pot and done all the vegetables and I put it into the Vitamix and then I turned it on and I blended it. And Vitamixes are very, very loud machines, but they work awesome. The higher up you turn them, the more smooth the broth will become. So listen. It could go on and on. I can leave it there forever, all right? But this is what happens. All of the vegetables are now blended into this broth. I sometimes will now add grated cheese and blend it again, all right? I could add in a little grated cheese. Now, some people like cheese. Some people don't like cheese, all right? So if you don't like grated cheese, you don't have to add it, but it does add another nice little flavor. So you could put it in the blender and blend it in, or you could wait and actually sprinkle it on top of your soup, all right? So now's the time where you have to say, am I gonna eat it just like this? I'm gonna add something to it. You could now take that cooked chicken, break off little pieces of white meat, put them in the bottom of the bowl, add the broth. Now you've got stone soup with chicken. Or you could add some kind of pasta or rice, which is my favorite way of eating it. Um, there's all kinds of pasta. It doesn't matter what kind. You can use orzo. That's a little tiny, tiny kind of pasta. You could use, as my fourth and third graders know, this is called Jamelli because when E is when G is followed by E I or Y, it makes that soft G sound. So I'm not going to say Gamelli. It's Jamelli. Um, that would be a little bigger pasta. I could use farfalle. It's an even bigger pasta. Okay, it's whatever you like to eat. There's one called tubatini. It's a little smaller, but it's nice and chewy. Um, and then the school teacher in me always has alphabets in my house. Alphabet pasta. And that's the one I chose. But notice it's halfway gone, right? Why? Well, I already cooked it. You will not put this in the soup raw because... If you did, it would be crunchy. If you put it in on the stove and cook it in the soup, this will suck up a lot of the broth. So you're going to take this and cook it just like you would cook any kind of pasta. In a separate pan, in, in boiling water, and I always salt my water when I make pasta because it makes the pasta have another layer of flavor, okay? But I already did that ahead of time. So I made that in this pot right here. Okay, I made it in here and then I strained it in my sink and there are my alphabets. So we're actually gonna have alphabet stone soup, all right? So here's what I'll do. It's already cooked, my water was salted so my pasta tastes pretty good. I will put a little bit in the bottom of a soup bowl like that. Okay, can you see it? I don't know, it looks like there's a glare. I'm sorry, I'm doing the best I can. And then I will take some soup. Now you can put this back in the soup pan and warm it up, totally warm up the whole thing if you're feeding a whole big family. Or you could just pour some right into your soup, okay? And then you can go right to the microwave and microwave this. Now remember, I could have added some pieces of um, chicken in, the cooked chicken. I could rip off some pieces of chicken if I want. So now, let me see if I can move this camera. I don't know if this is showing. I see nothing but a glare, but there it is. Let me see if I could show you. There's my pasta. And this broth, this yellowish broth is delicious. It has all those vegetables in it, but it does not taste at all like vegetables. 
And I use this broth when I make other recipes in my kitchen. I use it to start chicken soup. I use it to start chick chicken marsala. I use it for chicken and wine dishes. I use it when I make pork. This is this broth I always keep in my freezer in little containers because it's used as um, a base for many of my other sauces that I make or recipes that I cook. But now I'm actually eating stone soup with this broth that was made. It really just started with a stone and water, and when we added all those other things, it tasted delicious. It, it makes it taste delicious. Now here's where I'll taste it. If it's not salty enough, I can sprinkle a little salt or a little grated cheese on top, but I'll bet you this one's just fine. Ready? It's delicious. It's delicious, and in here, I'm eating carrots and onions, sweet potato, white potato, broccoli, zucchini, green squash, tomato. Look at that, you can't see any of it. And it and it just tastes like a delicious vegetable broth. That's all it tastes like. But it was from soup from a stone. Fancy that. That's what one of my books used to always say. Every time they'd say soup from a stone, fancy that. I thought that was a cute little ending. Anyhow, I hope you try this. Try it. Be brave, be creative. If it doesn't come out great the first time, no worries. Try, try again, all right? Start with a small batch so you don't waste too many ingredients. You know, you do fail in your kitchen sometimes. I always do, but I just keep trying and I make it the way I like it. But that is one way to make stone soup. And don't forget to go online and look up different versions and maybe you can compare like what one character did and what the other character did. Oh yeah, before I go. So what do you think the moral of the story was? Did you get time to think about it? You thinking? I hate to give it away, but this is what I think. And if you agree with me, maybe talk it over with your family. But I think he was trying to teach us that, um, if everybody works together and everybody just contributes a little bit to the greater cause, that we can accomplish great things together. Like everybody doing just their little part, we can accomplish a greater thing together. And that's kind of called working for the greater good. And that really means that when you do that, you're working to benefit more than just yourself. You're trying to benefit the world around you, doing something that helps everybody. And right now we're all staying home from school and we're all staying home from work and we're washing our hands and we're being really, really careful because we don't wanna spread germs to one another. So if everybody follows the rules and does their part, every one little person who does the right thing is actually going to help make this world a better place and we'll have less people get sick and we'll all be back to school and work sooner if we all just do our one little part. So isn't it funny how a story like Stone Soup can teach us a lesson that we're actually living right now, today? Well, that's all for now. I miss you all very, very much and I will be sharing many more cooking stories and activities with you Please enjoy your weekend, and until next time, happy cooking.